it oh. is. Oh, hi! The Morning Drone is the Todd oh, Aaron Morning Stream on GetParDaily.com, and this is the beautiful drone, who we like to call Drone. And that's from Magna Looking East, isn't it? And yes. And we have this big fancy, like, pilot, and he's all, like, certified and licensed yeah. and stuff, and he gives us the most we are, epic we are, pictures ever. We are a drone for good and not evil, and I think <laughs> that's important for all we you We will not drone be hovering and... over forest fires, no. All right, so um, we should talk about the, uh, the the morning cam as well, shouldn't we? We should go, Where's go the morning, to the mountains. Where's the morning mountain Right cam? there, Robert J. DeBry. And a oh. beautiful, another easterly shot. See, that really is gorgeous. And the way the lens, the light lights kind of lands out of the mountains, just between the that sunlight, peak, that's you really mean? pretty. Yeah. That's what I said is sunlight. All right, we better address the thing on your shoulder. The parrot in the room. Before we do, we've been goofing around all week, all week with old videos, old okay. VHS tapes, right? Mm -hmm. And and uh, this is us 20 years ago. We just happened to pull oh, this no. yesterday. Oh, no. Which one is this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. look at my eyebrows. You really were like a boy band. I mean, seriously, you're like, like One Direction. Like, you're like all four of like them. caterpillars crawling across your face. I know, but look how beautiful you are. Look how beautiful you are. You're more beautiful now, though. You are beautiful now. No, now I'm Not haggard. then. And I'm wearing a parrot. Yeah, that's true. Let's go back to the parrot. he's looking at me. All right, so explain what's going on because uh, today's the day. We're keeping fingers crossed. I'm cautiously optimistic because this morning it looked, my eye looked a lot more clear. Okay. After 13 hours in the emergency room of the U over the weekend, I mean, they're wonderful people, by the way. They tell the best stories ever, all the really disgusting medical stuff. But they finally decided that instead of a stroke, I was actually just had a torn retina and that it was kind of bleeding into the into the eye, which is a lot better, I feel, than than having the, you know, the stroke. So it was kind of like a win-win for me. So... So I have to wear the patch all week. Which so. I think is hot. I do like I it. really had, did not know you would have an issue, like a I patch kind of thing. I like mermaids, too. But anyway, back to the pirate. So, so every day we've been adding something, too. We started mm -hmm. with a patch. We went to a headscarf. Then we went to the hat. And mm -hmm. Today... It's the parrot. The parrot. Hi. Will yeah. you stop looking at me? You're making me nervous. You know, really? when we... Oh, anyway. I don't know how they I don't know how they did the parrot thing because it's driving me nuts. You but have to wear it all day, even when you go to the doctor. Now, see, here's the true horror of this for me though, is because there was about uh, ten years ago, Todd was being absolutely magnificent. He was up at our family cabin, and there was another guy who was trying to put on chains on his tire, you know, because it, we'd had a huge snowfall. And all of a sudden, I see Todd flat on the on the snow, and he's covering his eye, and he'd managed to snap the chain back up and like split his eyelid. Which is actually a very Todd thing to do if you think about it. This is totally what you'd expect from my husband. So we, we had to take him down to the emergency room. And the thing that I felt worse for you is that usually when you're getting some sort of thing stitched or some injury attended to, you can close your eyes and look away, right? Like, I don't, I'm not seeing it, so it's not happening. You, you have to lie there while the needle... It's, this, is what it, this is what it looks like. It looks like this. We're going to sew your eye up now. <laughs> That's what it looks like. No, it's horrible. Oh, no. And it's so today, when I go up there, they're going to have this sizzling laser thing, and I'm going to be lying there on my back, and I'm going to have to watch the entire thing. There must be drugs involved. <sighs> Not enough. For me, just to have to watch you. <laughs> oh, it was funny when she was in the hospital. Uh, it's a university, so it's a teaching hospital. So when they're doing something interesting or new, there's a line forms behind that person. Yeah. So everyone gets yeah. a try. It happened once when I went for a prostate exam, and I'm not going to talk about it. But um, I saw them put up the, pull out the instrument, and they did it to me. And there was like four people in line, and by the third time, because what they do is they're measuring measuring the firmness of your eyeball, mm -hmm. and so they. It's they the vitreous. Oh, let me show you up here. The vitreous is like the gelatinous yeah, fluid so, in your eye. So here's here's your eyeball, right? And they take this thing and they go point, 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 point. And then they get a reading off of it. They get a reading off of it. And I was like, okay, done. Get away from me, students. So they pulled it out for Aaron. And I went, oh, this is going to be really, it's going to be creepy. <laughs> Hang on. And they did it. But you're fine. You're going to have laser today. Good parrot. And, uh, and everything's going to be good. I feel really bad. I went to pick up Zoe at, in kindergarten, and she and all the little boys, she's got like all this, you know that age. They're all like crazy. They're like, what happened to your eye? Why are you a pirate? And so I was explaining about the blood and the vitreous, because they're little boys. They're going to like blood, you know, and how it has to settle so the laser can get in. And by the end, they're all looking at me, and they're just shaking like this, like, 
And I went, oh, honey, here, let me let me look. See, see, it's not so bad. And they're like, oh, okay, okay. I actually grossed out the five-year-olds. I thought they would be so into that. See, I so, I so would have taken the patch and lifted it up and go, ha! <laughs> <laughs> no, that's so mean. Oh, okay, okay. Um, a, a three-day weather forecast because here here comes the weekend. Okay, first of all, brought to you by Columbus Travel. Columbus Travel's got an amazing weekly newsletter that they send out that gives you all of the lightning deals for the week. It's definitely worth checking out. All you have to do is go to columbusvacations.com. Also by Executive Transportation, a white glove California style service with Utah affordable prices at executiveutah.com. And all Utah plumbing, heating, and air. This is the time to start thinking about this air conditioning and sprinklers. Go to allutahplumbing.com. So the three-day weekend is kind of here we stuff. go. Get ready for some nice weather today. Sunshine, <gasps> 77. Friday, 84. And Saturday, 82. So aren't we supposed to be camping on Saturday? We deserve this. If I still this. have an eyeball. We deserve this. We deserve this. And, this is going to be a camping fact, weekend. Speaking, speaking of 82 degrees, what are you going to need in your house? You're going to need air conditioning. And mm -hmm. who's going to do that for you? Uh, I think it's going to be all Utah plumbing. Okay, now this is pretty cool. Um... I just enjoy the irony of this because. So anyway, so you're so uh, plumbing. You're going to get your AC done. Your AC is going to be done. John is there. All Utah plumbing. Here he is doing some sprinkler work. They do that too. Now is the time. Heating, plumbing, air, remodeling. Uh, they they cut your hair if you want. Uh, they're that kind of. They're they're full service. They put booties on when they come in your house so they don't mess it up. They don't leave a mess. And you know what? They only fix it once. That's it. They fix it once and then you're done. And that's why they are they are the people you want to call all Utah plumbing, heating, and air. Now would you like to hear about a pleasing symmetry? Yeah. Not I, not I, really a ple more like an irony, but okay, there's a Utah State Bureau of Investigations officer. Now this is basically the state's version of the FBI. Yeah. Well, he was just arrested on a DUI, a driving under the influence. This is Jason James Whitehead. Um, also arrested for carrying a dangerous weapon under the influence of alcohol of drugs what? and having an open container this in the vehicle. This is horrible. So this is a bad combination yeah. being the state's FBI and uh, getting all nailed yeah, for yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. Okay, this is the only part that really irritates me. He was on his way to a training assignment at Lake Powell. For like boating or something? No, this is my point. What possibly, what, what could he possibly be training for at Lake Powell? Well, we're going to be training how to dock these houseboats. Right. And we just want to, really? That's, <laughs> don't you think that's a little thinly veiled? We're going to yeah. do a training exercise at Lake Powell. Is that like going to Bermuda to do studies on a frog species? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That's funny. Yeah, you stink. I don't know if I'm mad at him for the DUI or the fact that he gets to go to Lake Powell for a training exercise. We should go for training exercise. I think we would be delightful at training exercises. Utah Jazz. Oh. I'm so excited. Tonight, what is it, 8.30? This is going to be amazing. Right here. Uh, on ESPN, I didn't realize we could see it on ESPN. That's really cool, the Warriors. Because I um, usually start flailing on Facebook asking people where to watch stuff, so this is good. Now we know. I'm not sure people are taking you very seriously with, with a parrot on your head over. I'm an, I am an authoritative news source. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Never mind. Let's not even talk about so it. So Utah Jazz tonight. I know. I'm Fingers so crossed. excited. We gotta get the second game. We really do. Well, you know, it's very funny because they actually. I want to. I want to film a video piece about this and trade over with our dear, dear friends down by Golden State because uh, they're all complaining, not just necessarily about the Jazz. We're like, well, we don't want to go to Salt Lake City because there's nothing fun to do there. And I would just like to remind them that when we are in the playoffs with the Bulls. And we had all these noobs teams come from Chicago. Right. We pinned them down in our studio and we force fed them Jello with carrots until they suddenly agreed that Utah was a great place to party. It took 40 of us. <laughs> we picked the shortest guy on their team. <laughs> it took about half an hour. Remember, the funny thing about the Bulls is they actually stayed in Park City because they were too good for Salt Lake City. They wanted something fancier. So we drove up that morning with a brass band, and we woke them up about 5 o'clock. It was awesome. Good morning! Yeah. Clang, and, clang, and clang, 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 clang. It was a drum and fife core. And so anyway, on the way back down, one of the overpasses down towards the valley on, on, uh, uh, on Parley, on uh, I-80, we hung a big sign that said, what was it? Welcome too to noisy. the Valley of Doom. It was pretty nice. Yeah, it was really fun. And then the next banner was, too noisy, too nice, too bad. Because that's the second complaint I was just like, well, you know, noise is a factor in why it's really annoying to play the Utah well, Jazz they did that. because our fans are very, very loud. Do you well, remember they did no, that, we're they too did that loud. to us in Chicago? They had people driving around the hotel honking their horns the entire night. It seems only fair. 
So anyway, God only knows what we can do to the Golden State Warriors, but I can't help but think that if we all put our collective brains together, something diabolical will happen. Work on it. So if you're afraid down there in California for coming here, you should be. Tell me something good. Best story ever. Are you ready for this? Let me adjust your parrot. Thank you. Is he is he tilting? He's askew. He there is a go. little askew. Right, now he's facing down. He's going to start pecking. Here. Okay. This is pretty, This once again, with everything we ever tell you about tell me something good, it always seems to start really awfully, and, and, and you're really freaked out, and it's like, ugh. But it becomes amazing. Bear with us. Okay, last week during rush hour near Golders Green, this is in North London, yeah. there was a man that just, he couldn't take it anymore. And so he climbed over the edge of the bridge. Oh, no. Over the safety rails, and he's standing there, and he's just about to go, and this lady sees him, and she drops her suitcase, her briefcase and everything, races for him, and throws her arms around his chest, and said, you're not going to go. Oh, I'm so, going to hold on to you. It's going to be okay. So she's on the other side of yeah. the railing. Yeah, and so three other men saw this, and they all raced right. to the raid, and they're all holding him, and they're taking his arms, and they're talking to him, and going, look, this will be okay. Right. And he's like, no, I'm going. And one of them whips off his belt, and he's like belting him to the, to the to railing. The, to the railing. And another guy who was a workman saw it, you know, Screech to a stop. Let's, let's look at this. Now look oh at my this. gosh. They screeched to a stop and he had he had yellow rope and his and you see the belt down there and the belt on his chest. And he's just holding it. And the so belt. they're and they're all tying it. But if you look at all those arms around him, he, for two hours because where, it was rush hour. Where and, were the police? Well here's the deal. Because it was rush hour, it was two hours because of the traffic jam to get police in there and they're uh. talking to him and trying to talk him down. And then it took another hour for them to get a, a hydraulic lift to be able to get this guy off safely the bridge over. safely to an ambulance. But those people held on to him, complete strangers held on to him for two hours That's and said, we're not going to let go of you. And when he was allowed visitors, and when he was allowed visitors in the, in the hospital, when he was being held in the psychiatric ward, they had all exchanged numbers and email addresses. And every single day, one of those strangers that had held him on that bridge that day for two hours came to visit him every single day wow. until he was released. And on the day he was released, because he didn't have family, Five of them arrived to take him home to his house. Really? That's an amazing story. Don't cry. I know. The parrot hates <laughs> that. All right. Okay. But I thought that was such a gorgeous way to it start the day. It is a gorgeous thing. That makes thing. me so happy. Should we go to our recorded package at this point in time? Because coming up we have... Oh, wait. What's that? We did it, honey. Okay. You're just, you're just like doing this whole laissez-faire approach to the show today, aren't you? Okay. I do. Coming up next, we're going to have all your weekend plans. Uh, we've got Daisy, who's in London, being, you know, awesome. Right. And we'll tell you all about it coming up next. We're brought to you this morning by Executive Transportation. Elegant service, professional style. Go to executiveutah.com. And All Utah Plumbing. Your home deserves the best. 24-hour emergency service at allutahplumbing.com. And by Columbus Travel, the best travel deals on the planet. Be sure to take advantage of our April sale, columbusvacations.com. Did you know you can catch the Todd and Aaron Morning Stream any time of the day or night on Facebook, YouTube, and SoundCloud, and gephardaily.com? All right, so at this point, I'm usually gone, and I know everybody wants me to gone, be gone at this point. Daisy slips in, but Daisy's not here. She's doing some research. In London. Yeah, isn't that surprising? Do we have any pictures, guys? Because she looks so adorable. Daisy and her beautiful husband, Jay, are back in London. This is where she's originally from. She's visiting her father. Those, are, think, those are English trees. I think I remember, we, you remember us telling you that her father and her mother had actually uh, designed the album cover for Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band for the really? Beatles. 50th anniversary, by the way. And they that. used to hang out all the time. So here's Daisy being impossibly Thug. hip once she's again. She's gangsta. Is she going gangster on us? Yeah. Yeah. And look, there's the buses and everything. Once again, being freaking adorable because she's, you know, Daisy. Once again, Daisy. So that just makes me a little bitter. Anyway, Daisy, I'm glad you're having a wonderful time and we love you. Happy birthday. It was her birthday yesterday. So I'm glad she got to go back and see her daddy. Okay, weekend stuff for you and we've got freebies to give away. So stay with me. Number one, Cinco de Mayo. Tomorrow is Cinco de Mayo. And as we know here in the plucky American states of America. We really strongly believe in Cinco de Mayo. So we celebrate with a certain level of ferocity. So number one, one of the nice things you can do is head out to Midville. They've got their Cinco de Mayo extravaganza. This is Midville City. There's performers like Sonia Lopez, 
They've got a whole gag really, of local bands and dance that'd groups. That'd be really fun to go to. Now, the event starts tonight, and then it runs through Saturday, and they have a big parade and everything. Admission is free, and there's a lot of local artisans. There's authentic food, tons of kids' activities. I'm hungry already. I know, right? And then in West Valley City, they're doing the Telemundo Cinco de Mayo Festival. That kicks off at 11 a.m. tomorrow and runs through 7. Once again, admission is free, family-oriented. Now, this is down at Centennial Park. That's 5405 West 3100 South, uh, lots of bands, dancing, food, all that good stuff. Here's your quiz, Cinco de Mayo, what's it mean? Well, here's, I wasn't finished actually, but okay. let's go with that. This is the educational moment that makes us look like sort of responsible We're parents. reading it. What do we actually celebrate on Cinco de Mayo? Right. Well, it's a holiday that actually celebrates the date of the Mexican Army's 1862 victory over France. They kicked their butts. At the Battle of Puebla during the Franco-American... Franco-Mexican War from 1861 to 1867. Now, ironically, this is a really minor holiday in Mexico, a lot like how St. Patrick's Day is kind right. of like, eh, in right. Ireland. Right. But I would like to say that with our scrappy can-do Utah attitude and our desire for another holiday centered around cocktails and food, we have managed to make this something magnificent. Oh, also, a couple of other things that you might want to take a look at. Blue Iguana is having a magnificent week-long celebration. They've got live music every night. They've got all kinds of like really bizarre drink specials. Plus they have I think food. they have a margarita fountain. And I'm lying. They don't have a margarita fountain. But I've always thought a margarita <laughs> fountain would be a great idea. You salt the whole rim and you drink out well, of the what? straw. But you know what would be the best thing, though, is, is that if like there were like one of those ice cream trucks you used to drive around your neighborhood play music, it would be like that but with margaritas. That would be the best thing. Oh, and also the Todd and Aaron Street Taco Tour. If you'd like to honor all of the wonderful local street vendors, we've got a full map of all of the Salt Lake City taco stands, and Todd and I are going to make like a kind of a circuit of them all tomorrow. If so you haven't done this. They're glorious. They are incredible. There's one on State Street by Sears. Mm -hmm. It's like night south. Mm -hmm. It was so no, good. Oh, and it's the cart facing State Street, not the one facing like ninth. It's the one facing east, and there's a difference. <laughs> Okay, so once again, you can get the whole list if you want to go to getpartdaily.com. Just go to the Todd and Aaron page. We have all the information, all the activities, all of the links so you know where everything is. Okay, for big movies coming out this weekend, the only one that really matters, and let's be honest, is Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Hope you're ready. It'll be here any minute. Is that a rifle? You don't know what a rifle looks like? It's just swords were your thing and guns were mine, but I guess we're both doing guns now. I just didn't know that. This is awesome because actually he gets a chance, Star-Lord, he gets a chance to meet his real father and it's Kurt Russell. And it's, I mean, oh, it's like the most epic combination ever. So anyway, already on Rotten Tomatoes, this has gotten a 98% positive review. You remember the first one from James Gunn pretty much had the same kind of thing. So it's going to be fantastic. You're going to love it. Of I course, can hardly wait. Unless you want some culture in your life. All right, Will Rogers Follies. This is really, really cool. Uh, it's the Will Rogers Follies Life in Review. Um, it's up at the Pioneer Theater, and uh, it was really interesting. So our photographer, Richard, managed to go up and get a look and kind of see what it was going to be all about. There you go. Well, I sure hope you folks had a, a good rest out there during the intermission. I know I sure did. If any of you took a smoke while you was out there, though, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. As far as I can tell, the only good thing about smoking tobacco is it chases away the mosquitoes, which is proof positive that mosquitoes is a whole lot smarter than people. My father and my grandfather both saw Will Rogers perform uh, back in the 1930s. And down in my part of the world, I come from uh, Dallas, Texas, uh, to begin with, and Will Rogers was from Oklahoma, of course, and, and all while I was growing up, people still in that part of the world remember Will Rogers. Well, he certainly was never a malicious character, uh, in any way, shape, or form. Although uh, some of his jokes were pretty pointed. Uh, but that, you know, the 19 teens and 20s and 30s when he was in his, uh, ha his heyday, uh, things were a little different then. And, and uh, people in high positions seemed to have a little bit of a sense of humor about themselves that some of them seem to lack nowadays. I guess the, the best connection I can hope that the audience will make is through me and the rest of the cast and the, the show is to make a connection with each other and with everyone around the world in the way that Will Rogers thought of the world in his day. It's not so much different than the world nowadays. And then, uh, well, let's see, we had the, the monkey trial down in Tennessee to prove that man descended from apes. But you know, I never believe that because I ain't yet met 
the ape that was devious or heartless or greedy. No, I always figured that man was descended from lawyers. How's that? You know Alrighty. what? He's a really important part of Americana. He really is. If you've never read his stuff, he was huge. He was huge, and really, it's really kind of cool. Well, you know what's interesting is I was talking to some millennials about it, too, and it's like I was named some of this. I did some of the statements he's done or the jokes or things he said before, and they're like, I recognize that. Yeah. They had no idea who it was. Right. But he's been part of the American landscape so long that that's what's happened. So it's up at Pioneer Theater Company, uh, May 5th through the 20th. Um, you can see the showtimes there. You can also go to getpartdaily.com. We'll have all the information there for you as well. But Ooh. our dear friends up at Pioneer were very gracious to give us two pairs of tickets. So if you'd like to win a pair of those tickets, we have two sets. All you have to do is we're, like we're gonna put those up our on Facebook, Facebook page. Right. So all you have to do is either like Get Part Daily, Get Part Approved, or Todd and Aaron. The yeah. Facebook page is just like the page, comment, and share. And that automatically enters you for the tickets, and we'll be drawing those tonight. But also, wait, Christopher's. There's, there's more. There's more. It's the bribery portion of the show. It's really good. This we're, is your chance. Okay, go ahead. We're very comfortable buying your love. It works with my kids. It's a lot faster than trying to earn it. So if you'd like to, Christopher's has got an amazing night out. We're getting you dinner there with three of your best friends. You get picked up in a sweet Escalade from a Executive Transportation. You have a wonderful dinner. You enjoy yourself. You relax. You don't have to worry about a designated driver. And then you get taken home again. And you finally get to hang out with the people you love and just talk and relax for a minute. Plus, you get to eat at Christopher's. <sighs> I Which is hardly, incredible. I understand that you and I are going to be forced to go down there and have dinner so that we can talk knowledgeably about the food. I suggested that. Yeah. And I'm glad they took us up on that offer. I think it's only fair. So if you would like to win that, once again, just go to any one of our Facebook pages, Get Part Daily, Get Part Approved, or Todd and Aaron. I'll like the page, comment, and share, and you're entered to win for Christopher's. We'll be drawing a winner for that tomorrow night. Coming up. Mm -hmm. Coming up, Aaron heads to the sky and throws up. Do I know about this? Merit Medical. Why work for fast food wages when you can start at Merit for a whole lot more? Merit Medical. Great products, great people, a great company. Learn more at merit.com forward slash careers. The law offices of Robert J. DeBry and Associates with offices in Salt Lake City, Sandy City, and St. George. Check them out at robertdebry.com. The Todd and Aaron Morning Stream is actually available anytime at gepharddaily.com. Just click on the Todd and Aaron page. All right, so, um, oh, really? This is a serious story. You have to take this off. I can't take, take the it off. off. Come on, put them down. Um, Red Sox. You hurt his feelings. Red Sox. Okay. Uh, Fenway Park. Um, someone These who, are our people. They are. Uh, Baltimore Orioles were playing. Center fielder goes out. And for some reason, they start, he's an African-American, and they start unloading on him with everything you can imagine. What? And they're throwing peanuts and... and Wait, is, is this modern day? Yeah. <clears throat> and so... This isn't our team anymore. I the changed comment, my mind. Commentary, uh, commentators were brought attention to this. And it was a group of people. It wasn't like one individual. And they were using the N-word. They were just all over it. And so he sat there and he waved them off a couple times. It's just going to play the game. It's going to play the game. So Red Sox... And Boston, I'm from there, has always had a really bad reputation on this. And the fact that they we are the last people to integrate on the Red Sox oh, to man. have African American players. And as a matter of fact, the owner Fowley, Fowley um, of, at that time um, let the crowd ridicule them on the field. And then there was wow. forced busing and stuff. So Boston has really had a hard time trying to get around this. So anyway. That's a really dark past of history. It part is. Of your history. It is. I don't, I, it's, it's very hard for me to, to it, stomach. It's, so to fly back, to go back to that, after so much work has been done. And uh, so And it was just one big group of stupid people, though. It right. wasn't the whole crowd. It's just some scumbags who. Enough that he heard them. So Adam Jones, the player, who's always really been really respected and uh, kind of outspoken, uh, brought it up. And next thing you know, he's meeting with the coaches. Next thing you know, he's meeting with the manager. Next thing you know, he's meeting with his mayor, then the governor, then the, uh, the, the leader for uh, the baseball chairman and whatever. Uh, and it just keeps going and going and going. As it should. Yeah. So next time, next night when he played... Got up to bat, standing ovation. People wanting. Stand, look at that. Oh, look at his face. 
But it is. It's people wanting to say, we're not all like that. We're not jerks. That's and not who to we show are. That that's not who we are. Oh, I love that look at his face. Isn't that cool? Because he's usually such a stoic player. And so I think that's just a cool story. And and, and the saving of face in a good, the very best of, of And ways. it gives us a chance to redeem again, yeah. which is really important. So. Okay, now, now, you, what was now this? you can put your okay. parrot back up. Thank you. That was You're cool, on. though. That redeemed my face. Right? All right, so tell me what... That's what my this, hometown. This so, is about sneezing, go. because I sneeze three times but, By the way, if you're just tuning in, uh, the reason she's dressed like a pirate is she's having eye surgery today, and that's what the patch, that's where it started, hat, everything. So anyway. This is how I found out my husband has a eye patch kink, which is really not... Well, if the people are just know. tuning in, they're going, oh, the Todd and Aaron morning stream on GetPartDaily.com. Why does Aaron have a parrot? What's up with her? All right, We've asked so that for a long time. You honey. sneeze in threes. Mm -hmm. Sneeze in threes. Mm -hmm. I do too, I think. Three, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of people do. But when you walk into sunlight, do you sneeze? Uh-huh, yeah. Do well, you? don't you, when you need to sneeze, you look up and you look at the light so that you can make yourself sneeze? It depends on your DNA. No. Did you know that? I thought everybody could do that. Uh-uh. It depends on your... It's it's called uh, photic sneeze reflex. Get out. No, and only some people have it. It's part of your DNA code. It's one letter mm -hmm. difference. One letter difference in your DNA code that makes you sneeze when you go into bright light. And, of course, uh, ev everyone knows that the variation is known as a single... Go ahead, Aaron. Polymorphism. It's a nucleotide polymorphism, or SNP. That's the spot where our DNA code. Trying to look okay. smart, make me look. Anyway, so no. <laughs> that's why you sneeze is because you have one a different uh, DNA thing, and uh, that's oh, and the reason for it, the mm -hmm. reason they that was in your DNA, nothing. No demonstrable no, reason. No, it didn't make cavemen survive. I would think it would like hasten your departure if you're standing there in the sun, oh, like trying to saber, track a dinosaur and then you sneeze and then they're like, yeah, trying to eat. Yeah. Okay. Well, not dinosaurs, because they weren't there at the same time. But Yes, they were, according to many people. Okay, let's move on, shall we? Instant karma. Are you ready for this? All right. I think there's a lot of times that we all watch something awful happen, and we're like, okay, karma's going to come around, and I'm just going to stand okay. out of the way, because right. it's going to be a backlash. All right, what happened? But sometimes it's nice to have that immediate karmic effect. <laughs> Um, this, it starts once again really, really scarily. Um, there's a nice little lady who opened her door on uh, Saturday night. This is in Kingsport, Tennessee. And there was a woman holding a flyer about a lost dog going, Hey, could you just help me? I'm looking for a lost See, dog. See, and, and you know she's going to help. So she opens the door and she's like leaning out like, oh, well, let's show me the flyer. And then this masked man comes out, grabs her by the throat and starts shoving her back into the house. So, so this is a, like an assault, like an invasion. Yeah. So it's thing. a setup, yeah. So he's going, this is a robbery. And so there's a struggle. Now, the victim is four foot, 11 inches tall. And she's got this big masked guy in front of her. She starts battling like crazy. She manages to get the mask off of his face. And she recognizes him as Joe Sotelo, a longtime family friend. What? And longtime family friend Joe has a gun tucked into his waistband. Well, like many people, she keeps a baseball bat behind the door. Now, she's ticked off number one, home invasion. Number two, she got tricked. Number three, it's like a family friend. He's got 100 pounds on her in a whole foot. He proceeds to beat the living crap out of him <laughs> in what police politely described as a clearly justifiable self-defense. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. man. Okay, it gets better. So she's just beating the holy hell out of this guy. Right. And he deserves every inch of it. And she's like chasing him across the lawn with the bat. This is, like the, scene, the this is like the scene in 50 First Dates when, when she stops, gets her baseball bat out, and she runs after the guy, Sanders' friend, and San, Sandler's friend, and just beats the boogers. Oh, so, but here's the best part. So... And then there's two 18-year-olds in the house, and they come to her defense, and they're kicking him while he's rolling around on the grass. Now, here's the, my favorite part. The woman who had been holding the flyer to trick her to come right, out right. took off in a car as he was desperately racing for it. <laughs> <laughs> she was later turned out to be his girlfriend. Nice job. So, you don't he mess. was still lying bleeding on the, car, on the lawn you when the police mess, arrived. Don't mess with Grandma. A baseball bat. I mean, that's like really full contact, close in battling, too. And I think we could see that from his expression. And that looks like a full swing. That doesn't look like a poke you in the eye thing. That looks like batters up, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, so sometimes um, it's just nice to see karmic right. in action, and boy howdy, yeah, that one so, worked out great. So all week, uh, we we found uh, in a box, brand new one, a VHS player, and I don't know if you you even have one anymore, but I don't think you can even get them at like Desert Industries because I've tried. Every once in a while, you can find them, but uh -huh. but a lot of people have the tape sitting around, right? Just have the tape sitting around. And they don't know, uh, you know, I have a player for them. And now I have a player. So we hitched it up to the TV. And then we turned it on. And it was amazing what we saw. Really? It was absolutely amazing. I mean, th think of all the things that we looked at. Us vacationing. Uh, is the ground a flat problem or space? Uh, flood runway heading. Maintain VFR at 5,500. Departure frequency is uh, 120.9er. And squawk 0160. I'm sorry? Your car didn't throw up, I'm assuming. Oh, no, I didn't. Dude. Pull a little bit. Pull. Yeah, get it right on him. Kill, kill, kill. All right. There you go, you're shooting okay. the bad person. Oh, I remember right that was screaming like a nut job because oh. he did a hammerhead right after this where he so goes up straight up this, and comes straight this down. This is what they do. The uh -huh. person you shoot has to go and do a maneuver. A maneuver. They go up and they do a hammerhead and they go down. So that was so epic. It's really fun when you're watching someone do that. But then the next scene you're going to see, Aaron, I don't think you've seen this in a long time. I'm not sure I have either. Because you get shot. But before you do, you're trying to evade them. Now, so you're going to make some drastic moves here. Okay. Drastic moves. Now, look, you're going straight up. See the tail behind you? Oh, you're no, You're going straight epic. up, straight up, straight up. Watch your face. Watch your face. Watch your face right there. Oh, no. That is the moment of no return. I just remembered. <sighs> See the breathing? Yeah. Shut up, you guys! Okay, just keep, <laughs> keep, keep watching. You're looking a little... Shut up! Look, look. Shut up. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. I got this. Looking out the window. Uh -huh. Breathing. Okay. <laughs> Not looking good. Ooh, a little lightheaded. Oh, this. Do you really have wait, to narrate wait. this? Wait, wait. Oh, breathing again. <laughs> the, the demise of my wife. Okay. Whew. Whew. Trying to no. Oh, God, please tell yeah. me I didn't do this uh, on camera. Yeah. Oh, please, oh head Lord. back. That's not a good sign. Please. Saying, like, oh, God. God don't let me do this on camera. Make me okay. I'll never fly again. Hands off the stick. All right. Whoa. Leaning forward. Don't. Oh, God. You're asking him quietly in your mic. Shut up, you guys. <laughs> Is there anything I can use in this cockpit? Because I'm about to mess up your He's having to stabilize, too, so it's... Watch the face. Hey, we're throwing a bunch at you at once. Whenever you're doing these pulling turns and so forth, I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's like a big Saturday night. You have an airstick in the back? Yeah, there's a bag right there. Push the mic up out of your way. Gets the bag. Oh there you God, go. Oh, God, you can see it on camera. <laughs> and he's laughing. No, he's making sure you're okay. Oh, wait, let's see that again in slow motion. <laughs> oh, no. no. <laughs> again. No, oh, no, don't my do it again. Oh. Gosh. Oh, my God. Will you cut that out, Richard Brandon? Stop. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> Oh, <laughs> you know, you know, it was a really good part you didn't get to hear is he quietly said, move the microphone because it's sitting right there like this. He goes, just kind of move it down before you do that. Okay, now I'm going to make you feel better. My dear wife, my dear wife, <laughs> I'm going to make you feel better. And I want everybody to notice this. My wife just went flying, dog fighting, upside down, did all these things, lost her lunch. They land, they taxi back to the hangar, and like every scene in any movie, when a woman, a hot woman, takes her helmet off, this is what you see. Well, thanks for flying with us. You did a good job. Throw up on your hand. It's that <laughs> classic head shake. <laughs> You're a good sport. I hate all of you, by the way. Wait till you'll see tomorrow. <laughs>
Uh, never mind. Um, uh, so anyway. <laughs> Nothing could be worse than watching me puke on camera <laughs> repeatedly. <laughs> I think there are guys in the booth who are editing stuff last night, and I think they had to, way too much time on their hands. <laughs> Plus, the 10 bucks I gave them probably helped. So anyway, thanks for joining us this morning on the Todd Nairn Morning Stream. I guess I, I'll be sleeping on the couch. We're going to leave you right now and get part of daily.com with another beautiful drone shot. This is from Magna, heading to east towards the mountains. You guys have a good day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.